We are at the Husker Harvest Days at Grand Island, joined now by Al Dutcher, the Nebraska State climatologist. And uh, Al, uh, we're here. The rain uh, continues to, uh, to fall, at least during Husker Harvest Days. As we're looking, those crops need to start drying down. Uh, <laughs> what are you seeing? What are the models telling you? Well, I think the big thing is, is of course, we've all been hearing about the freezing potential. Um, I don't think it's going to be as bad as what was initially forecasted last week. The models have kind of slacked away somewhat in terms of the intensity of the cold. The other issue we're going to be dealing with is there could be some fairly extensive cloud cover. So it's not only a ma matter of the thickness levels indicating freezing temperatures, it's how much residual cloud cover are we going to carry. And based on that, I would say that the area that's most likely to see scattered freezing conditions is going to be North Dakota, northern Minnesota. And then as you head south from there, I think it's going to be more of a spotty type nature of freeze. The other thing I think we forget about is an incredible amount of heat is held within these canopies. So when we look at these air temperature measurements, we're taken at five feet above the surface. Therefore, we're not really measuring down at the canopy level of soybeans or within the canopy of corn. So really what we need to see to really have a detrimental freeze is a 28 degree or lower indication by the models. And I just don't see a lot of that. Will it cause some harm? Most likely. Will it be widespread and cause detriments to U.S. national production? I seriously doubt it. And then after that, what we do look at is a kind of warming trend. We see the ridge rebuilding back in. And the next slug of cold air really at this point doesn't come in until at least 10 days down the road. And right now it's directing it toward the upper Great Lakes, which would be Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, points to the east. So if that's the case, it's going to take at least another 10 more days based on these troughs and ridge patterns moving progressively across the country for us to get another shot. That takes us into the first part of October. If we make it that far, soybeans are fairly much safe here in Nebraska. What we'd be looking at in terms of corn would be those that had to replant from all the hail and the freeze damage earlier in the spring. And even then, I think we'll have reached the point where the corn is dented sufficiently where we may have to deal with light test weights and, and maybe a slight reduction in yields, but nothing that would be earth shattering. So unfortunately, the thing the issue is going to be harvest. Sloppy conditions. Sloppy conditions. And I think that that's the one concern that we have, that we're seeing this regular periodicity. When we do get the rain in, it's very cold. We do warm up. But we're not getting a 10 to 15 day stretch right now between events. And that's, you know, basically what we're going to need to see, or otherwise we're going to be slugging through this harvest. And, you know, based on the way this whole year's went with record production, that would be the icing on the cake, so to speak. Have high dry costs, slow, tedious harvest. And then we start to watch whether or not this El Nino function becomes a player because all of a sudden you start taking up some of these slugs of moisture out of the southwest, sort of like what we're dealing with today in advance of this cold front. Those are the ones that could be the killer. Not sufficiently cold enough to give us blizzard-like conditions in Arctic air, but sufficiently cool enough with the northern jet in compilation with that moisture from the southwest to produce the heavy snows, and those are the ones that cause us problems in terms of losing yield out there in the field. As you mentioned briefly, uh, El Nino is back in the news. Uh, others are saying, well, it, it, we still have about 60, 70 percent chance they're saying, but maybe not as extreme as what we had first heard. Is, is that kind of what you're reading? That's what I was saying last spring. There was no yeah. way that I could see that we were going to see uh, the kind of El Nino event that everybody was hee-hawing about in the spring, uh, you know, this record El Nino type event. I, I don't know where that came from. I think it was wishful thinking. The one thing that you could see consistently for the last year, even as this event has slowly unfolded and it has slowly unfolded, has been a tremendous slug of below normal sea surface temperatures emanating from the Antarctic region coming right up into the Central Pacific. And that has consist been consistently there for the last year. It has weakened slightly and that's why we expect to see some type of moderate event to weak event no stronger than that. And then we have to also consider we're going into our fall and are just going into our spring so that ice is going to start melting. So now we got a reinforcing surge of colder than normal sea surface temperatures that should reinforce that area. Therefore, once we get into next year, early next year, we'll probably see this event fall apart rather rapidly. Well, we've talked about a lot of things. Let's talk the, the good news for wheat producers is they're going to come in looking good as they look to plant this wheat. I know we're only in the middle of September, but because of the amount of rain even out west, 
Will we see some slight delays in, in getting this uh, this planning in? I think that's very possible. I think that if we're going to see the delays, they're going to be from Kansas northward. Once we get down south, um, they're still going to see enough warm temperatures. And because they've not dealt with such a long-term drought, the soils can take a lot of moisture before we get those profiles filled. And that helps to dry the situation out, coupled with the temperatures. What I do see, though, is the opportunity, at least from a U.S. national production standpoint, we don't know what's going to happen next spring in terms of freezes, but looking at the moisture slug coming in, what has happened, what is likely in the future, based on everything CPC is saying about the extended forecast, probably looking at the potential for a very robust winter wheat crop coming next year. And on top of all the problems we have with low grain prices, you know, this is one of the results that will probably end up falling for fruition. Secondarily, we're building up subsoil moisture reserves across the entire corn belt. We haven't been able to do that the last few years. So we're coming in the fall wet. This pattern continues. We could have a dry winter with very little in the way of significant moisture, and I wouldn't be concerned whatsoever, just like this last winter. What I'd be more concerned about is if this pattern continues, what happens next spring? Do we start to return to a wetter pattern, and now we have the same situation that faced our counterparts to the north and to the northeast of us where planting delay issues become real problematic you know and the way the climate has been the last 10 15 years these extremes seem to be seem to be the norm right now and so one logically we expect that we'll go from one extreme of dryness to the other extreme but begs the question do we get a drought in the middle of next summer and with an el nino you can never rule that out if we're going to see that let's pay attention to the northern corn belt particularly the dakotas minnesota I'm not so concerned about what's going to happen this winter what we're going to be concerned about is, is as we regress through the winter and this El Nino event dissipates, what is going to be the mean northern jet stream pattern? And if we get a ridging pattern developing such that it starts to block off the flow of cold air coming in, that's where we start to pay attention to. And, and a lot of times we'll see droughts developing in the northern plains after an El Nino year. So if we're going to see drought, that'll be the area where we're paying attention to. Not worried about the eastern corn belt. It does have a drier tendency during El Nino patterns, but you're talking about areas that get 40 plus inches of moisture. So even if they go below normal, 10 inches below normal for a 12 month period, they're still going to pull some pretty decent yields out of there. Their droughts have to come right during the growing season. All right, Al, thanks a lot. You bet. And you can catch Al every weekend on Market Journal. He does a, a quick forecast. And, uh, of course, and if you go to almost any meeting around Nebraska, you've probably seen Al, and you will as well. So Al Dutcher, uh, state climatologist, has joined us. Musker Harvest Days for AgView. I'm Ken Rogers.